Hey there, I'm your host Lissoi, and this is part 3 of the Wavespawn system. In today's video, we'll be creating the majority of the workflow for how the system works. And with that said, let's begin. We'll begin by going into our content drawer, and over here, we'll create a new folder called Wave Data. Now, inside of this folder, let's create a structure, which will be called S underscore Wave info. Now inside here, we want to have one variable. And this variable will be our enemy pool. And if you remember from the previous video, we had this as a map. So we map what type of enemy we have to how many number of that enemy we have. So let's get our enemy base parent class reference map. And we want this to be an integer. So with that done, let's save and exit and we'll create a data table from this wave info. So go to your miscellaneous data table and we want to select S underscore wave info. Press OK. DT underscore wave data and DT stands for data table. Now inside here, you can create as many waves as you wish. For the purpose of the video, we'll create two and later I'll show you how to create your own algorithm to create more. Now for the row name, this will be equivalent to the wave number. So wave one equals row one, wave two equals row two and so on. So to make this easier for ourselves, we'll put one, two and whatever numbers you have. So on wave one, we can create how many enemies we want. So let's say we have 10 enemies on our first wave and we'll have our enemy warrior spawning in. Now on wave two, we can have um, 10 enemies of the first, let's say which will be our enemy warrior. And then we can have five extra of the other type. So this could be your wizard, whatever, output scout. And that's your two waves. So let's exit out of that. And we'll go into our wave game mode. Now we'll create a new function here called get pool size. Now in here, we want to get our enemy pool. And if you remember, once again, we had keys. This gets the type of enemy we have. Now we can get values. This will get all the integer values. And what we want to do here is we want to do a for each loop. We're going to add them all up. So from the array element, we're going to hit a plus on our keyboard. And this value will promote to a local value called local underscore enemy pool. So we're adding whatever we have to here and then we want to set it. So we'll alt left mouse to grab it and set it and plug it in like so. Then when this is completed, uh, on for each loop completed, we'll do a return node. And we are simply returning the total enemy pool that we have gotten. So let's call this our do, 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 enemy pool size. And this can be a pure function. So let's compile and save that. Next, let's go ahead and build our wave. So we'll go here and create a build enemy pool. And like I've mentioned before, each row name was representative of a wave number. So let's create a new variable called wave number. And this will be of type integer. Now here we'll get this. And for each wave, we'll do, uh, let's grab a get row, get data table row, and plug in our table there. Now in order for this to convert, we need to do to string, and this will convert to name. And there we go, that's our data table with all of our waves. So we can break this open and we are getting our enemy pool size. So we're gonna get our own enemy pool size in this blueprint. And we wanna actually set this to whatever this value is. So if the row is found, we do that. Now, if the row is not found, this is where we do our algorithm stuff. So let's create a function for that and we'll get back to it later. Algorithmic algorithmic wave. So that's what we'll add. 
when we have not found a row. So we'll get back to that later. Now here, once we've set it, we want to get the pool size we built. And we want to set our enemies remaining. So we'll set like so. And we want to also set our total enemies because this value will be decrementing as we're killing them. So it's no good for us as total enemies. So we'll get the total enemies, set it, and also get it from here. Perfect. So this is our build enemy pool function. We can exit out of that. Next, we'll go ahead and build our wave. So create another function called build wave. Now in here, we want to grab our enemy pool, build enemy pool. And we want to grab our enemy pool size. And then we want to compare, we want to get the minimum value of both the enemy limit and the pool size. So our pool size, enemy limit, there we go. Currently, we can set it to any value you want. Let's set it to five. Now this will increase as the waves get higher and higher. But for now, we'll do a min node. So this will get the lesser value of the two. And from this min node, we'll minus one. And the reason we're minusing one is because we're doing a for loop. And for loop starts at zero and our enemy count doesn't start at one. So this will go into the last index. And once we've done that, we also want to do add enemy to Q. So that's there. Perfect. And this is our build wave function. That's all we need to do in here. Let's uh, compile and save that. And let's go ahead and create our countdown timer. So let's create a new function, countdown timer. And inside of here, we want to do a set timer by event, like so. And once again, we can't have custom events inside here, so we got to do create event. Uh, we want to return in here the minutes and the seconds. So in order to do that, we first got to create them. Minutes and seconds. Now I can see this is kind of getting clustered. So select one of them. And for the category, we'll type in time. And let's also grab our seconds and drop it into time. So it looks a little bit cleaner and you can organize it further if you wish. So get our minutes, got to drag that in there get our seconds, drag that into there. Whoop, not what I wanted. That's our minutes, and this is our seconds. All right, so that's that. And now the time, we're doing it this based on a clock, so one second, and this will be looping. Now for this event, we will create a two, two, two matching event called start timer but of course we can't have this here so let's copy that move it to our event graph go back let's close those two for now go back delete that and plug start timer into here and if we compile we should have no errors perfect so let's go ahead and create our start timer in here we want to grab our seconds and we'll do a equals equals, get a branch, like so. Organize this a little bit. If this is true, or if this is false, we want to grab our seconds, and we want to minus one from it. And we're going to set this as our seconds. On false. Now, then if this is true what we want to do is we want to get the minutes also check is this equal to zero and do a branch if it is true well then we want to well, let's do false first if this is false we'll set our seconds to 59. remember we're doing a tick by one second and from here we're going to set our minutes to minutes subtracted 
one. You can also do a decrement if you wish. Subtract that like so. Now the value at the end, we want to call a dispatcher. This dispatcher will let us know to update the UI later on. So create a new event dispatcher um, on timer updated. And I don't know if you can see that it's squished at the bottom there. Can I bring that up? Currently can't. Okay, but on timer updated right there at the bottom. So in here, we want to give it few values or two rather, both integers. And we want to know the minutes and we want to know the seconds. So if we drag it out now, call it, it's uh, prompting us to give in the minutes and the seconds. Now it's easy for us to do that. Just drag those in like so. And the value to, to, to on true, or did I mess up? Oh, the value here, you want it also to go in there like so. So you could bring that a bit uh, down so it looks better. Now, if um, this is true, that we have run out of time, well, then we'll do a custom event called reset timer, which we'll call from our um, UI. So reset timer is here, and we'll do a do once. So do O and left mouse button. You get it. And we'll put reset into here. Now, this only happens if our break, that's why we need it, is not true. So we do a not boolean like that. And if it is true, well, then we call our interlude function, which we can find in our event graph, interlude. So that's our break, our transition. And on false, we'll get our break and set it to be false. Just like that. So this is our timer for now. So we could even maybe comment it. Timer, uh, wave timer. Okay, so let's compile and save that. Next, let's go ahead and create a new function, which will take care of adding time to our waves. We can call this our wave clock. Now in here, we want to create two more variables. I've tried this with the local variables, didn't quite work for me, so not sure what that is, but let's create our normal variables and we'll call this stored minutes and stored seconds, like so. So let's just drag this into our time uh, category and we'll get our stored seconds and we want to add to this whatever value you want per round. Personally, I want to do like 20 per round. And we are going to then set this as our stored seconds. Like that. Then we want to see, is this value equal or greater to 60? Because that's one minute. And if it is, we want to clear it. So stored seconds goes back to zero. But we are incrementing our minute by one. So get your stored minutes. And do plus plus or add one, whichever you like more. This will increment it for us. And then we want to set it as our minutes. Uh, da -da -da, not start minutes, regular minutes. So, uh, oh, we're incrementing the stored minutes. That's important. But we are setting our minutes as this value. So make sure all of these are correct. Otherwise, you might have some time issue. On false, we want to get our stored seconds. I'm going to set it as our stored seconds because it's not greater. So we're just adding to it. So 20 becomes 40. And we're going to get our stored minutes and set it as our minutes there. So whatever minutes we had, we continue with. And this is pretty much it, I think, for the wave clock function. So let's uh, compile and save it. And next, we can go ahead and update our start and end waves. So I'll close that and go to our start wave. And here we want to get our wave number because if the wave starts, we want to add one to it. So we'll do an incrementation like that. From here, we want to get all of our spawners. So back to, 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 to get enemy spawners like that. 
and then we want to have a wave clock. So this will add the time to our waves and do all the bits. Then we also want to have a event dispatcher to let our UI know what it should display. So in our event dispatchers, create a new one called on start wave. Now in here, we'll have quite a few values. So first value we're going to plug in will be our wave number. Let's create a few more. We want to know our enemies killed. This value will be zero on start. We want to know our total enemies and we also want to know the gold collected. All right, so with that done, let's call it and plug all the values in. So wave number goes here, enemies killed goes here, total enemies goes here and the gold collected. There we go. Select all and press Q. It'll even it out for you. Right, so at the very end, we want to call our ba -da -da, reset timer, if you remembered. So all this does is it resets this. All right, so that's our start wave. Let's save that and go back to end wave. So let's update this. Now, whenever the end waves, we want to clear the enemy skilled. So set that back to zero, as well as our minutes and our seconds, just like so. Plug that in there. And then we want to do a for each loop on the enemy spawners because we want to clear all the enemies. So when the wave ends, we just want to remove all of them. So we'll do clear all enemies. Uncompleted, we'll have another event dispatcher called on um, wave end. And this doesn't need any inputs, just letting us know that the end ha the wave has ended. So that's pretty much it. Let's compile and save and let's give our system a test. Now in the next episode, we'll be covering the UI, but for now this should do. So let's remove our enemies, our goblins, and let's add a few spawners. So enemy spawners, grab one here, grab one there. And if we hit play, it should take five seconds for them to spawn. So We'll see if that works. And this has been more than a five seconds. Let's see why that is. All right, so I figured out the issue and let me take you through it. Firstly, in our wave game mode, I never added the interlude uh, function to our event begin play. So simply grab it and plug it in. That's one issue. Second issue is on our get enemy from pool, I had a branch in the find, which I don't know why I did that. So Remove it and this should go straight into there. Third issue on start wave, I also forgot to plug in build wave. So let's grab it here and add that there. And lastly, on build wave, we're supposed to have minus one in here. For some reason, when I was going over the code, this was zero. So have minus one. And the reason for that is, is we're using a for each loop, which is based on zero and our enemy pool is always going to be based one. So if this is zero, you're just going to spawn in four enemies instead of five. So that's that. That's the wave game mode. And lastly, in our enemy base, when the enemy is placed in the world, it's only placed in the world. It's never spawned in. So on your enemy base here, type in possess and make sure that the auto possess AI is placed in the world or spawned. Otherwise, they'll never spawn in. So with that, let's compile and save and see how this looks like. Hit play. And after five seconds, we should get the first wave. So let's see. Yeah, we get four enemies and another five seconds, we should get one more. There we go. So, and every time we kill one, a new one will spawn in. So that's that. And that's our two waves. Now we don't really see much happening. So in the next part, we'll take care of the UI and every other remaining function that we need to do. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.